a 135 prime lens is a gorgeous focal length for portrait photography that you can use to create beautiful dreamy portraits with or for stunning headshots due to its compression. I use this focal length very, very often for my wedding photography as well. While we do have two options for 135 lenses for Sony E-mount, we have the GM 135 f1.8 and we have the Sigma 135 1.8. I'm really excited that Samyang is now adding a third option to the mix as well. So today we're going to be taking a closer look at this Samyang 135mm f1.8 to see how it performs in the real world at a portrait photo shoot with both the a7 IV and the a7 III. So this Samyang 135 f1.8 weighs 772 grams, which makes it the lightest lens in the trio with the GM and the Sigma, which is the heaviest of all three. It has three customized buttons, including a focus hold button, a custom switch, which you can customize with the lens station and a focus range limiter switch. Okay, so let's take it on location to see what it can do. I'm starting off on the Sony a7 IV and I'm gonna be shooting with this lens wide open at first. I decided on this location because I know these trees are going to make for a great background on a 135 focal length. Let's start with the most prominent feature of these photos, which is the bokeh. I made sure to photograph with lots of negative space and with different distances between the subject and the background, so we have a few examples to look at throughout the video. That looks amazing. And we'll do some, yeah, without your hand as well. The bokeh is absolutely gorgeous. I love how creamy the background is and the bokeh is nice and round towards the center of the frame, forming a little more of an eye shape towards the corners of the frame. The bokeh is extremely clean. There is no texture and no chromatic aberration around the edges of the bokeh either. All right, beautiful. And then I'm gonna get back and try and get like a bit of a lens flare. Oh, that looks so pretty there. Speaking of chromatic aberration, I'm really impressed with the CA control of this lens. I took photos in brighter spots of our location, including one with the ocean in the background where the sun was very harsh and I don't see any chromatic aberration at all, which is great. Why is it so difficult to find a lens flare right now? I was trying so hard to get a lens flare at our location during the photo shoot, but- I literally cannot get one. The closest I could manage was capturing a little bit of ghosting in the bottom half of the frame with harsh backlight. I decided to take the lens out again on another sunny day to capture some lens flares for you and here's a little collection of what I captured. I really like the lens flare from this lens, it can be used to add a nice effect to some photos. This lens is extremely sharp, especially when you pair it with a camera like the a7 IV. I can see a lot of clarity and details in these portraits and the colors look great straight out of the camera as well. I also took a few photos at f2.8 and I'll bring a couple of them up side by side with a similar f1.8 shot to compare them. For me personally, I prefer the dreamy look of the f1.8 shots. I love close-up portraits where the eyes are in focus and the rest of the face melts away. But the photos at f2.8 look good as well, especially if you prefer for the entire face to be in focus. Before we move on to autofocus accuracy, I want to take a moment to tell you more about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members where you can get inspired and learn new skills about photography, video, graphic design, illustration, and so much more. I've been watching quite a few classes from street photography to lifestyle photography as I really like to get inspired, but one of the main videos I've been enjoying is the wildlife photography class by Ruben Clark since I've recently been trying out wildlife photography. Getting to learn from a knowledgeable wildlife photographer has already given me so many tips and ideas on what to do when I go out with my camera. Skillshare is ad-free and they are adding new premium classes every week, so make sure you try it out so you can check out all the classes available to learn something new. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Check it out. <laughs> I also saw there's like a little spot just behind you. See, like there's like a little footpath there. Is there any, if you could stand like on that rock and I'll get a full body shot of you here. That looks really nice. I feel like with this one, if you even stand kind of like that, yeah, that's beautiful. I'll 
I'll get in just like a little closer. <laughs> just get it coming closer. There we go. Moving on to autofocus accuracy. This time, I'm happy to say that the autofocus accuracy was great. At f2.8, I had no issues at all getting photos with critical focus on the eye. And at f1.8, this Samyang 135 really shined when taking extreme close-ups, normal close-ups, and mid-length photos. At those distances, I had lots and lots of tack sharp photos to choose from. Do you want to do a couple more over the shoulder ones too? I'm going to get in like real close. So this is like a headshot. That looks amazing. I did end up capturing some eyelash focus photos on both the a7 IV and a7 III, but it was very minimal. About 1 in 10 or so photos slightly missed focus on the iris during close-ups and extreme close-ups on both camera bodies, which is a really good focus ratio. With the portraits I take for my lens reviews, I always ask my models to keep moving in every single shot as it provides a more realistic representation of what it's like using this lens for an actual photo shoot. It is a lot harder to focus on eyes when the subject is moving, even if it's just a little bit of movement like you see in this photo shoot here, compared to when a person is standing still, which we will also be testing out in a moment. Where the lens did struggle a bit more often with autofocus is when I was taking full body photos or mid-length photos from further away. In these wider shots, there is less clarity in the face compared to the closer up photos. I noticed that the photo was sharp in some other area of the frame instead of her face, so in some shots it was focusing on the leaves or on her dress rather than her face. I was able to get photos in focus on the face as well, but I did notice more missed focused images in this scenario. So I want to get a couple of autofocus comparison photos with the Samyang 135 and the GM 135. So at the moment, I have my focus tracking sensitivity set to one, which is locked on, and I'm going to take 20 photos and just see how many there are in focus with both the model and I staying still. Okay, so try not to blink. I can stop at 10 so you can have a little blink break. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. On the Samyang, I got 16 of 20 photos with critical focus. So you can see that even with both of us staying as still as possible, the focus does slip a little bit. On the same camera body with the GM, I got 18 of 20 photos with critical focus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Something to keep in mind is that the GM is a more expensive lens that uses dual front and rear XD linear motors, which is why the focus is more accurate in these shots. However, for the price, I think the amount of photos we got in focus on the Samyang is still good. I was also being very critical of only counting iris focusing as well with both lenses. For comparison, the Samyang uses a linear STM AF motor. In the side-by-side -side shots of the GM and Samyang 135 portraits, they both look extremely similar and it's really hard to tell them apart at a glance. Both have nice sharpness and clarity, great colors and bokeh. Actually, I need to lay down too so I can see the trees in the background to get some bokeh. So I'm switching to the manual focus Samyang 135 F2 and I'm just gonna move my focus point and zoom in to make sure the image is sharp. Okay. I haven't used the manual focus 135 in a long, long time and I forgot how beautiful it is. Looking at the comparison photos though, I do think that the AF version is just as nice. I noticed the manual focus lens is a bit warmer and both lenses have a really nice render for skin and portraits. The bokeh from both lenses is really clean, and I did notice the manual focus lens had a lot more ghosting when shooting backlit portraits compared to the AF lens, and I was using both lenses without a lens hood. 
I've just switched over to the a7 III, so we'll get a few more shots. I'm starting off at wide open at f1.8. Like the a7 IV, focus accuracy for closer shots was amazing with lots of photos in focus. And again, when stepping back to take further away photos, the lens would miss focus a bit more often. So I did have the same experiences with the a7 III that I did with the a7 IV in terms of image quality and autofocus performance. Overall, I think this is a great prime lens from Samyang that is pretty good value for money. I really enjoyed using the Samyang 135 f1.8. I love how light it felt on location and it was very responsive with IAF on the a7 IV, a7 III and a7 S III. So if you're looking for a more affordable long prime lens for portrait photography, I do think you will be happy with this lens. We'll take a look at video in a moment, but as always, I have a sample gallery that you can download on my blog, which I'll leave linked down below, so you can take a look at some high-res JPEGs. And also, let me know in the comments if you want to see an entire photo shoot comparison with the GM135 and the Samyang 135. While a 135 focal length might not be used a whole lot for video, I did want to show you some samples because Dan, for example, does use a 135 pretty regularly for his video work, usually on sticks for longer reach shots. First up, we have some slow-mo footage from the a7S III, and I think these shots are really beautiful. The autofocus is sticky on the subject, and IAF looks really solid, especially in these close-up shots. Also, props to Dan because these shots are all done handheld. So keep an eye on the bokeh in these shots of Jasmine, then I'll switch to some shots of Dan we took on another day on the a7 IV. You can see while he's walking towards the camera and even when he's standing still, the bokeh starts to jitter on the a7 IV. I was able to replicate this on the a7S III. It tends to happen when the subject is closer to infinity and moving towards or away from the lens. This lens is pretty fast when it comes to tracking a subject moving towards the camera. It mostly did a good job of finding the subject when it pops into the frame as well, but then a couple of times it would randomly also not be able to find the subject as you can see here. And here's an example of how fast the lens goes from close to a mid portrait focus range and I also found that this lens has some focus breathing. So that is all I have for today's review of the Samyang 135mm f1.8. I'd love to know what you think of this lens and my review down in the comments below. Hopefully this video helped you out, but as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye!